When the Nicholas P. P. Brown Committee um, established uh, the awards for excellence in Chinese numismatics, it only occurred to us at the time, uh, back in 2013, to have a lifetime achievement award and an annual award. A lifetime achievement being for uh, our our um, our colleagues, our our, um, our academics, our uh, collectors who have done over their lifetime extraordinary work in the advancement of the hobby uh, and the annual award being for someone who just did something uh, very impactful in the year it was given but we came to realize that that was inadequate because there's so many people in our hobby who have done so much who don't fit into either category. Um, for that reason starting this year we established a historical award for those uh, who have made quite an impact uh, in part of their numismatic uh, careers, maybe not over a lifetime, but their impact is one that lasts beyond the time that they were involved in Chinese numismatics primarily. So this year, uh, the first year, we, the committee, uh, wants to acknowledge and give this award to two gentlemen who were so important in the development of early modern Chinese numismatics. Uh, that is one gentleman who is with us uh, today, Fred Weinberg, our colleague, and another gentleman who's not with us, uh, unable to uh, travel, but was also very uh, important in our industry for his work in developing the China market, and that's Louis Vigdor of uh, Manfred, Tordella, and Brooks. So uh, I'd like to call to the podium to uh, talk a little bit about Fred, uh, his good friend, David Kammeyer. Thank you, Robert. So I've known Fred for a long, long time. Uh, my first met Fred as a teenager. And it started off by the fact that I collected mint errors, and Fred is, of course, one of the biggest mint error dealers ever. And we got to know each other, developed a great friendship. And along that way also, he used to tell me these stories about his adventures in China, and then going to Tiananmen Square. And never would I ever guessed that some 30 years later, I'd be going back to the same place. So, Fred and I shared not only a lot of memories and stories about errors, and we also share a great fact that myself, Fred, and Nick actually wrote a book, The Top 100 Greatest Men Errors, which that's, as Danny had mentioned, Nick also loved error coins tremendously. So Fred, I, and Nick also created a great bond and friendship over this, and it's with my pleasure that I'm happy to announce Fred as one of the recipients because of all the things he's done in his early programs and all the tremendous stories that he's told over the years. Well, the first guy was the head of the China Go, Mr. Fred, by the way, when was this? Day? What time was it? Was it was in 19... That young guy at the uh, end is uh, yeah, 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 yeah. He's the head of the Great Wall now, right? Okay. No, he was the vice president. He's back at Beijing. 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 And uh, there's Fred and Ellen and Chai Ming. Uh, yeah, that's a translator. It's a translator. And Mr. Zhu is the vice president. Uh, the Zhu Chai Ming Xin. Chai Ming Xin is the translator. And there's Fred Weinberg. Okay, so the first guy on the left there, that's the Mr. Liu, that actually the Vice President of China Great Wall. I think he's back yeah, in Beijing Liu. now. He's the guy who took you guys to the Great Wall, is Mr. Liu. He was the, the driver then. Yeah, he's the driver. Yeah. Now he's the Vice President. So. Right, he, <laughs> he worked his way up. This yeah. Guy, yeah, this guy, that guy's the head guy. That's the general manager, Mr. Gong, that's the older man. Yeah, Mr. Gong. Yeah, yeah, that's the, this is the translator. This is, I think, Fred's ex-wife. Right. And that's <laughs> Mr. Li Chai uh, from Taiwan. <laughs> It's young Fred, that's the, the vice uh, young the M, Mr. Jim. <laughs> and, <that's, laughs> and that's from the, uh, the general office, and there's another translator, Ms. Han, from uh, Mr. Zhu's assistant. So 
So if we go to the next slide. Yeah. And that's uh, Mr. Zhu, and Mr. Han, and Fred. Uh, much younger. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Fred, it's with great pleasure that I give you this 2016 Nicholas P. Brown Special Achievement Award. Dave, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> With it comes a certificate. Ooh, beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for this honor. Um, let me start by saying this. When you meet Marty Weiss, your life changes. It's very obvious. I became a full-time coin dealer in, in 1972, and I was working for one of the largest retail and wholesale, excuse me, one of the largest um, wholesale uh, dealers, um, Numismatics Limited of Beverly Hills. That's when I met Marty. Marty was good friends with my boss at the time, Harry Gordon, who passed away in 1980. Marty had just started international registry dealing in right. world coins and foreign coins. His great smile, sense of humor, <laughs> his enthusiasm. It was always a pleasure to deal with Marty. He had, he had a joke, he had a funny comment. Um, you looked forward to seeing him, whether it was for lunch or dinner, or just seeing him in the office. For the next 25 years, I would go to Europe six to eight times a year, buying very large quantities of U.S. gold from all over the Western European countries, and I'd come back to the office and sell them. And it was kind of the, the golden age of buying U.S. gold coins in Europe. It still happens today, of course, but the quantities and the condition of the coins that you could buy back then was just was unbelievable. It was in 1982 when Marty first got the Panda coin program from the China Mint. At that time, the concept of modern issues and new issues that we see so overwhelmingly uh, prevalent today in the market really hadn't even taken effect. Paramount International sold some coins, the Franklin Mint was doing some coins, but the concept of having a mint do the type of coins that Marty was promoting and selling was brand new and it really hadn't been exposed very much. Um, the very first time that I took some of Marty's inventory um, to a coin show was a Las Vegas coin show, a relatively small show. Um, Ellen, who became my wife a little bit later for 10 years, um, <laughs> came, came with us to the show and I gave her a half a case to put these panda coins in. And a lot of people, all of the dealer friends that I knew for a long time, they came by and they looked at them and, oh, those are cute, the pandas, what are they? Panda coins. People didn't quite know what they were and the premiums were a little bit higher than they were for other bullion coins at the time because initially they were supposed to be a, a bullion type issue. Um, um, at the Las Vegas show, um, I started promoting, showing people, saying, hey, these have limited mintages. I can't remember what, if we even knew what the mintages were at no, the time. It, it turned out that 82 one ounce panda, I think was about 13,000 yeah, coins, yeah. something like that at the time. But I felt that I had helped introduce some of these coins to the regular coin dealers, not Marty's retail customers, but the coin dealers that would be needed to promote coins to their customers all around, around the country. Um, that show was one of the first shows that awareness of the Panda program outside of Marty's efforts, and we all know Marty's great efforts in, in marketing, a genius, um, but that, that show was the first of a few that I started to say to people, you should look at this. Um, I started dealing then with MTB, um, I say, we, we did incredible amounts of business, and that led to my interest. I actually had a program with the Swiss Mint doing Helvetia coins, which were not legal tender, but also beautiful designs. And this was around 1985, and so that market and that awareness of new issues started to really come about at that time. The China Mint came to the United States for their first a and show in 1985 in Baltimore, and I think if I can take an extra couple of minutes, you'll enjoy this story that some of you guys have heard. Um, 
Chinamen came with 500 one ounce silver Great Wall um, coins commemorating the ANA on one side with their logo and the Great Wall of China on the other side in, ironically, a plastic case that preceded PCGS and NGC by a year or two. At the show, the sales for that metal, which were priced at $20, and silver was, I think, approximately $7 or $8 at the time. Because it wasn't a legal tender coin, sales were very, very slow at the show because the American public just, why would they pay $20 for something that melted at $8? And it wasn't a legal tender coin, which was very important at the time. So Ellen had said to me, you know what, we need to buy some of these to maybe stimulate things and, and show the China Mint that, that we support them. So I think we bought 50 or 100 of them, put them behind the case. I put one out in my case that happened to be the case with all my other, um, with my other error coins. It sat there for a day or two at the ANA. Nobody said anything. Maybe the third day of the show, one of my customers comes up to me, points at it, and says, um, how much is that error? And I said, oh, you mean the, the double-struck penny over there? He says, no, 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 that, that great wall thing. I go, well, that's not an error. It's a one-ounce medal commemorating the China Mint's first uh, attendance at, a, at an ANA. He says, no, it's an error. And I'm looking at it upside down from my case, and I go, no, it's not. He says, yes, it is. So I open up the case, and I look at it. And there is the Great Wall of China written backwards, the, the first, first die error of modern Chinese coins. And I look at it, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. A, fan, a fantastic, great, wonderful error. So we immediately went back, and we bought, I think, another 100 or 150 of them <laughs> for $20. And then pretty soon, word got out. And within a few hours, the entire issue was sold out. Everybody was running around on the floor like they've done at this show the last, the last few days, offering big premiums. The security guards guarding the doors were offering 50 then then $100 as people walked out because there were, some, there were some people that bought them before they knew that they were errors. So, and I thought as an error dealer, collector at heart, I just thought it was a fantastic error. I wish the U.S. Mint would make something like that on, on their die. Um, Today, of course, they're, they're worth a, a small fortune. I can't even believe what they were selling for five or 10 years ago. But anyway, that's the story of how the Great Wall of China era, which is one of their most famous um, era coins, was discovered. Um, in September or October in 1983, I made my first trip to China, China with Marty and with Amy, with Ellen, and we visited the China Mint in Shanghai, uh, um, China Gold Coin Inc. in Beijing, uh, we stayed one night in the same compound that Richard Nixon stayed at when he came to China in 1972, which was a great honor. And the experience and the warm hospitality of everybody that we met in China, whether it was China Mint people, uh, business people, people on the street, they were so warm and friendly and smiling. And I think they enjoyed meeting Americans, too. It's, this was pretty early in, 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 China's, in modern China's time with, with people coming. The changes that I've seen in China from that first trip in 1985 and earlier uh, to today's China are probably some of the most important advances that any country has ever experienced in, in world history and world culture. And of course, their bullion and commemorative coin programs have, have become the most popular by far any mint of any country and consistently uh, for decades now. It's, it's just incredible. Um, in that first trip with Marty and Amy and Ellen, we visited the Great Wall, and I was just, as I was just telling somebody, I brought with me for this three-week trip to, we went to Hong Kong, we went to Taiwan, we went to Japan. Um, I brought some off-center pennies so that I could show anybody that we met who was interested in coins what an error coin looked like in case they had some Chinese, Taiwanese, or Hong Kong error coins. Um, by the end of the trip, though, I hadn't really seen enough dealers, so I had a pocket full of these coins. And one day when we took a tour of the Great Wall outside of Beijing, I decided, because this is the type of mentality I have, it would be fun to throw some of these off-center pennies off the Great Wall of China, 
so that in a hundred years from now, when somebody is renovating the wall and they're digging around, they're going to find these American off-center pennies and go, how the heck did these get here? <laughs> well, I'm the one that, that, th that threw them there. Um, by the start of 1989, my company had purchased well over $20 million worth of China Mint material from Marty, MTB, MDM in, in um, Germany, Taisei, uh, both Taiseis in Singapore and, and in China. And what we did, I, don't know if, I think Marty knows this because Ellen told her, we actually Xeroxed off every purchase order from prior years from all these big distributors. And we flew to China and we said, look at how much we're buying. Don't we deserve our own program? That led to the Dragon Phoenix program. Um, and I signed the contract there in May of 1989, um, which is an incredible experience. And you'll see some of, you'll see a video, I think, coming up of some of that. Um, we were always very strong supporters and marketers of all the major China Mint programs from that time period, from the, the mid 80s till probably the, the late the late 90s. Um, we bought major positions from all the companies. We promoted them. Um, Ellen was the Panda Lady. Well, that was her nickname at the time. One of the few women in, in numismatics at that time. Um, I'd like to thank Marty. And, and everyone at the China Mint, the Bank of China, China Gold Coin Inc., for allowing me to participate pretty much from the beginning, especially with Marty's help, uh, through the first 15 years or so of China Mint's phenomenal uh, impact on all of numismatics and a major part of my profession that I've had now for 45 years in the coin business. So thank you, thank all of you guys, and I thank you for this honor. than I thought, probably.